we will also continue to implement needed reforms in the public service to significantly improve the ease of doing business. On the news tonight, President Buhari receives Dangote Group for Real Fem's commitments towards improving ease of doing business. Aftermath of defection from the PDP, court sacks former Speaker Yakubu Dugar from the House of Representatives. Iconic television drama hits the screens again. We have 5,000 and 10 reported cases as of today. Plus, amidst rising cases of domestic violence, the Women Affairs Minister proposes psychiatric tests for attending couples. Hello and welcome to NT Network News. I am Ian Ray John and we are live in Abuja. Adela Komia Kure is in Lagos while Fatima Hassan is in Makwadi. Welcome. And just to let you know that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. So let's begin. Nigerian entrepreneurs and investors have been tasked to emulate the Dangote Industries Limited by channeling their ideas and resources towards creating firm anchors of enduring economic prosperity for the nation through massive investment in worthy enterprises. President Mawad Buhari, who threw the challenge while granting audience to the chairman and board of directors of Dangote Group, promised to sustain efforts at implementing needed reforms towards improving the ease of doing business. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has the details. Exactly one month ago, President Muhammad Buhari at Ipeju Leki inaugurated the new $2.5 billion Dangote fertilizer plan, regarded as Africa's largest granulated urea fertilizer complex and the second largest of such plants in the world. Receiving the chairman and board of directors of Dangote Industries Limited on a thank you visit for the honor done to them, the president maintains that. The coming on stream of the fertilizer plant was a most welcome booster to his administration's strategy towards achieving food security and reducing poverty. Given recent developments globally, especially the effect of the ongoing war in Europe on worldwide food supply chain, I must commend you our foresight for bringing the plant into operation at the time you did. I know that market realities will bring pressure to bear on Dangote Fertilizer Limited to seek to meet the demands of your export customers. However, given your group's well-known patriotic vision, I am confident that your board will continue to accord priority to meet local demands of our farmers. Apart from noting the scope and scale of the business empire of Dangote Group and its positive impact, on the nation's economy, the president is also delighted that the company is also committed to not only growing existing investments to enhance wealth and job creation, but also seeking new opportunities to help Nigeria's economic diversification drive. I want to assure you that the government will do everything possible to enhance development in infrastructure, especially in energy and transportation sectors. We will also continue to implement needed reforms in the public service to significantly improve the ease of doing business. Entrepreneurs such as Alhaja Aleko Dangote are unique gifts to their societies and the institutions they build, and they often become the pillars of stable and enduring the chairman of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, had told the president that despite the unprecedented challenges faced, especially over the past five years, Dangote Industries Limited remains strongly committed to the pursuit of its vision to becoming the leading provider of the people's essential needs in food, shelter, and energy services. Our belief is that our country has the potential to be a strong industrial nation capable of not only meeting its basic needs of our citizens, but making significant contributions to Africa's economic transformation. 
we firmly believe that Nigeria will be the powerhouse of the continent's inclusive and sustainable economic development through industrialization and strategic diversification. He described President Buhari's unequivocal commitment to the creation of an inclusive, diversified, and resilient economy based on the promotion of domestic productive capacity as a source of great strength and encouragement. Dangote Group also subscribes fully to the economic policy stance of the government aimed at ensuring that the nation produces what it consumes and consumes what it produces, which it believes is a call to action. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari says no responsive and responsible government can ignore the role of religious and traditional rulers in tackling insecurity in the country. Speaking at an iftar dinner after religious and traditional rulers, the president said his administration would continue to count on the invaluable advice and guidance of members of the revered institutions towards improving the current security challenges in the country. He said moving Nigeria forward remains a collective responsibility and therefore urged leaders at all levels to contribute meaningfully in making the country a better place. Today, insecurity is one of the greatest challenges facing Nigeria's existence. This administration has invested more resources than any other to tackle insecurity. We have acquired advanced equipment for our armed forces and the police to strengthen their capacity to confront terrorism and banditry. We have made adequate budgetary allocations for security. Whatever the security agencies request, I made it available to them immediately. But insecurity is a worldwide phenomenon. The cure and the answer is for all sections of society to do their bit and confront the criminals head on. The success of our armed forces and other security forces also depends on intelligence about the activities of bandits and terrorists. The Oni of Ife, Oba Adiyeye Enitom Ogunusi, and the General Secretary of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Joseph Duramola, thanked the President for demonstrating a high sense of responsibility in the discharge of his duties. The Oni, in particular, commended the federal government for the way and manner the COVID-19 pandemic was promptly responded to and contained in the country. There are so many positive things to celebrate. Yes, there are challenges, but let us look at more of our strengths than our weaknesses. On behalf of my brother kings, my brother monarchs, from the north all the way to the southern Nigeria, we will continue to pray for you. We will continue to do what we are supposed to do. Any key decision making in this country, one way or the other, you carry us along. On this note, I want to use this medium to say a show appreciation for you and to you and keep up the good work. Similarly, in the spirit of the Ramadan fast, the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, has distributed food items to vulnerable groups and other organizations committed to improving the welfare of people at the grassroots in Kano State. The items distributed include bags of rice, sugar, millets and other essential commodities. Presenting the items to the beneficiaries on behalf of the First Lady of Nigeria, the special assistant to the President on media in the office of the First Lady, Aliyu Abdullahi, and joined all the groups to ensure that the food gets to the targeted members. He also urged them to ensure fairness and equity in the distribution of the items. The First Lady has also called on well many Nigerians to continue to show compassion to the less privileged, especially in this period of Ramadan. The beneficiaries comprise charity foundations, children homes, association of widows, orphanages, people with disabilities, Kanewood members, as well as inmates at the Nigerian Correctional Service. The representative of the beneficiaries and filmmaker Ibrahim Madawari expressed the happiness for the usual gesture, which he said 
has been coming their way for the past seven years, courtesy of the First Lady of Nigeria. Also, the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, has enjoined the spouses of the Nigerian legislators to continue using their soft power in convincing their husbands to support more gender-friendly legislations to ensure more women participation in governance and other decision-making processes. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports that the First Lady said this during the breaking of Ramadan fast in honor of the female legislators as well as the spouses of the Nigerian lawmakers and other Nigerian women. Distinguished guests, today's iftar is deliberately planned to create an opportunity to dine and understand ourselves as wives, mothers, and leaders of this nation. Our role as partners in progress is key to the development of this nation, particularly in fostering peace and unity in the country. I would therefore like to encourage us all not to relent on our efforts and support each other, especially in making the right choices in choosing our leaders. When we work together and understand each other, our future and the future of our children becomes secured. We have laughed and chatted with one another. We've exchanged numbers. We've interacted with one another, especially at this time, a time of devotion, a time of meditation and a time of prayer. Lots of things come up in our minds for ourselves, our families and our nation. Participants from all works of life, including the Minister of Women Affairs, Paul in Tallinn, and the wife of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Salamatu Bajakbe Amelia, promised to continue stirring the advocacy of women emancipation in Nigeria, particularly the realization of the affirmative action. Women is not only about involving women in the decision-making process, but empowerment is also about accepting women's thoughts and viewpoints. In this regard, it gives me great pleasure knowing that the Ninth Assembly has pushed for two landmark bills, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act and the Gender Equality Opportunity Bill. We want you to please handhold us from here. As our women come out to aspire, let it not stop at aspiration. Let it transit to candidacy and from candidacy to delivery. Women who will effectively represent Nigeria. The annual IFTA was also attended by the former First Lady of Nigeria Republic, Lala Malaika Isofu. Still on Ramadan, Islamic scholars have advised Muslims to intensify prayers, especially during the last 10 days of Ramadan, as the rewarding benefits could turn around any misfortune a nation might be facing. In this report, Garba Nata Allah takes a look at the significance of the last 10 days in which the Night of Majesty, believed by Muslims to be worth a thousand months. Only is that period again. The last 10 days of Ramadan is there as Laylatul Qadr, meaning the Night of Majesty, which is described in the Holy Quran as far better than a thousand months. It is also within this period that the doors of paradise are said to be opened and angels descend closer to the world, being a period of mercy and blessings. Here are Islamic scholars on the significance of the last 10 days of Ramadan. Allah in his infinite mercy made mention in the Holy Quran that Quran was revealed in the night of majesty. That is Laylatul Qadr. So Laylatul Qadr is between these last 10 days. Anybody that call on Allah at that time, Allah will answer his prayer. Even non-Muslim, that they say because they know God exists, and they say, God, this is what we want. Allah will give it to them. It is now a challenge to us, the Muslims, that do not waste your time. Some Muslims also speak on how they intend to utilize the period. So we should also endeavor to include our country, Nigeria, in our prayers, our leaders, and in the coming election. Is I pray for peace in Nigeria. The rewards are too enticing for the faithful to intensify worship with the hope of witnessing Laylatul Qadr which is expected to fall on any of the odd nights of the last 10 days. In Abuja, Garbanatala, NTA News.
Let's now talk politics. After meeting with the All Progressives Congress governors and members of the National Assembly, as well as APC Caucus, Vice President Yemi Oshibadio, in continuation of his consultation, meets with the Oyo State delegates towards the party's national convention coming up soon. State House correspondent Jideo Nifade reports. This is the scene at the airport on arrival as leaders of the party in your state are here with a large contingent of supporters to receive the vice president. The fourth point of call thereafter is the personal residence of the Oluba Donkey Battle Line, Obamoshu Olale Konshula, to pay home. Our country always need all of those who are willing. willing to serve it to the best of their capacity, to the best of their knowledge. I did so humbly with great humility because it's, a, it's not a light assignment. But, but after seven, seven and a half years or so, as vice president, after even acting, but under our president, President Muhammad Buhari, who truly gave me every opportunity and who opened up governments to me in a way that most, most deputies may not have experienced. I must give him all the credit for ensuring that he entrusted a lot to me. Very soon, hopefully, and in God's name, he will be president of Nigeria. At the Badon Civic Center, groups and individuals root for the vice president to be Nigerians' next president. Members of the party claimed that there is no more factions in the state as they are all now united and focused in their backing for the vice president to be the next president. God does not make a mistake. He, God is deliberate in everything that he does. And by giving me all of those opportunities, every one of the opportunities I had to see for myself, to understand governance for myself at the highest level of our country's governance, to be exposed to everything, local and international, at the highest levels of governance in our country. All of it was not just so that I would sit down and write my memoirs. No. It was to come handy one day. And I believe the time has come. Well, it was supposed to be a mere consultation, a tete a tete with the delegates. But what we have here have turned out to be a carnival you know, with people, you know, members of the APC in Oyo State, trooping out, members, uh, with the 292 delegates sitting and uh, promising the vice president of their support for his ambition. From the civic center here in Agoti, Ibadan, Jide Onifade, NT News. Time for a first break. Please stay. Oh, they make a run use of Ojari. Guy, what is your blue line now? But I can't down now. So we decide now, and while they give me stress, then I will block my life. But my blue and I ain't legal. See, but pass now. Stay full. Just dance the ones that run my heart. Stay away to do. See. Take, give my phone. Hey, what if I don't get NIM before? Simple. Just go any glow word now. Once you go get your NIM. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I get plenty guys. You don't need your NIM. No. And see, now they're supposed to get blocked. Then they're going go any glow word now. Once they're going to block their life. Yeah. Nah. Hey, no, I know I make I use the whole book now. I go start my own later. Guy, yeah, talk plenty, talk. You know, when I link my line, glow, that means plenty for us. Yes, now, and when you link your own line, glow, it actually up to 20,000 Arab bonus. Yes, yeah, so 20,000 Arab bonus. Yo, yeah, ma'am, there you go. Remove. Yeah, I don't link my hand and hand. This bonus now for both you and existing customers, so. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. You know I know you're making up the truth Why can't I go before I lose my goal I love you even past the difficult Bye. Bye. Bye.
Don't worry, dear. I'll take care of it. How do you manage to keep your fabric so white? Wow. And how do you manage to keep your house this clean? I always use Hypo to make our white clothes whiter and to keep our home clean and gem free. Make your white fabrics whiter and your home free of illness, causing viruses and germs with the disinfecting power of Hypo Bleach. Now available in 200 ml bigger sachet. As we celebrate with Thanksgiving, the 101 years of God's amazing grace on our mother, Mrs. Mary Omozuge Aifua, venue St. Peter's Anglican Church, Lagos Street, Benin City. Date Sunday, April 24, 2022. Time 10 a.m. Reception follows immediately. A mother's love is more beautiful than any fresh flower. She is the proud mother of many children, including the veteran politician. Honorable Agarese Indubo. Mother, you are our first friend and of course our best friend. We celebrate you today as our centenary. We love you. Join us. Thank you for saying. Fusion 774, a political support and economic advocacy group, is urging the former chief of army staff and President Nigeria's ambassador to Benin Republic, Lieutenant General Turku Burutai, to contest for the office of the president of Nigeria in 2023 general elections under the platform of the Oil Progressives Congress, APC. Ismail Musa reports that the group made the call in a news conference in Abuja. Lieutenant General Tukuburatai, the former chief of army staff, now Nigerian ambassador to Benin Republic. Based on his exploit on the counter insurgency operations in the Northeast, degrading Boko Haram terrorist group, the retired but not tired general is being called upon to service by Fusion 774, a political support and a socioeconomic group. Tokur Yusuf Boratai reclaimed all territories and under the control of Boko Haram elements. Boratai is one courageous leader who could step in and bring the much needed solution to the security challenge, the desired and the desired development for the country. The detribalized grassroots oriented group is urging Ambassador Bratai to declare interest to contest for the office of the president of Nigeria in the 2023 general election. We are calling on Nigerians to support this very clarion call. He is, you know, a human being who feels the pains of people. So we believe that Burata has the, the, the will, the mental will, the acumen to sit down if he accepts this call, hopefully, to attack, to tackle this uh, terrorism on these two fronts. The group stressed that. It is prepared to buy the APC presidential form for the former army chief in Abuja, Ismail Musa. 
NT News. Elsewhere, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has sacked Yakubu Dugara from the House of Representatives and declared his seat vacant. Dugara, who represents Buguru and Das Federal constituency of Bochi State, was the Speaker of the House of Representatives between 2015 and 2019. The presiding judge, Donatus Okorua, on Friday held that Dugara's defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress was wrong and meant he should vacate the legislative seat. Dugara defected to the APC after winning his re-election on the platform of the PDP in 2019. Now, the Nigeria Governor's Forum has expressed its commitment to intensify war against illicit drug trafficking and abuse a lead factor for growing cases of insecurity in parts of the country. The forum, in its fourth teleconference in the year, promised to strengthen collaboration with NDLEA to tackle the menace head-on and prosecute peddlers, no matter their status in the society, through enhanced operational synergy. Nigeria Governors Forum also resolved to combat outbreaks of Lassa fever, measles and cases of meningitis in parts of the country and pledged to sustain immunization and strengthen epidemic preparedness and response strategy with NPHCDA and global partners. NGF says it will improve public financial management outcomes and promote adoption of e-procurement and open contracting data standards under state transparency, accountability and sustainability. The United Nations World Tourism Organization has awarded 100 tourism online academy scholarships to Nigerians willing to undertake basic training in the field of tourism. This gesture comes on the heels of Nigeria signing an agreement to host the maiden UNWTO Global Conference on Cultural Tourism and Creative Industry, expected to be held in Lagos in November this year. Anthony Forsen has the details. The meeting was an informal one, a dinner hosted by the UNWTO in honor of the minister and his delegation, Secretary General of the organization, Zurab. Polo Likashvili used the opportunity to formally present the offer to the minister. He said the World Tourism Organization recognizes the efforts of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and in particular the minister's interest to empower youths and boost quality education, hence the award of the scholarship. Polo Likashvili explained that the scholarship will lead to the award of certificate in introduction to tourism industry management. Responding to the scholarship offer, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed expressed saying criteria for selecting beneficiaries will be announced soon. The idea is to get uh, young people to get interested in tourism early in life and learn the basic uh, tools of tourism uh, in a manner that many of them will be encouraged to uh, understand what tourism is all about and probably choose tourism as a profession. So it's being given to Nigeria Recognition of uh, the ministry's uh, contribution to UNWTO, uh, contribution to the growth of tourism, our uh, passion, you know, and commitment to tourism. The UNWTO Online Academy would give us the criteria, we will publish the criteria, and we will now, uh, you know, uh, advertise or you know use whatever method, you know, is possible working with other, uh, you know, agencies under the Tourism and Culture uh, Ministry to uh, choose uh, the best 100 um, uh, people that will benefit from this uh, grant. Of course, we are going to also work you know, closely with uh, uh, professional association organizations. The UNWTO Tourism Scholarship is a partnership between the World Tourism Organization and IE University in Madrid, Spain. Anthony Forson, NTA News. Once again, viewers can be glued to their TV sets, just like in the 80s, as the iconic TV drama, The Village Headmaster, hits the screens again. And Ebola Brooks Lentandi was at the relaunch and private screening of the program. The reports. I bring you wonderful news. The Village Headmaster is coming back to your screen. And the time is now for Nigerians to begin to enjoy the drama series, The Village Headmaster. Rated Nigeria's longest-running television soap opera, 
on the NTA from 1968 to 1988. 50 year anniversary. Today, media chief executives converged to witness the rebirth of the drama series that showcased culture, family values, and community relationships. Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Eben Mohammed, recounting his experience as a child, said Village Headmaster was the first program he watched on TV, which informed his decision to bring back the old experience to the present generation. The rebirth of the Village Headmaster is divinely ordained and is bound to succeed. Like Kopra Adol, Magana Jarichi, Sawanja, Ichoku, and Maskoyot. I want to tell the whole Nigeria that from Sunday, 8 o'clock, there will be a new Sunday, Sunday tonic to reduce blood pressure in the history of our country. There was a minute of silence in honor of members of the cast who were no more to witness the rebirth. And it will help our youth to take the proper direction. Even uh, parenting too. That's something that is uh, portraying our culture and tradition in Village Headmaster. And that will give them an insight of how our villages live. DGNTA commended the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, for his roles in ensuring that the rebirth was a success. Without his intervention, today wouldn't have been possible. So I would like to uh, you know, register our appreciation, my appreciation, that of the management and staff of NTA, that of WAP. The village headmaster is a set in the fictitious Yoruba village of Oja with plot lines dealing with social problems and effects of government policies on the community. Adebola, Brooklyn, NTA News. And we're from entertainment now. The federal government is working towards improving efficiency and synergy among agencies under the Ministry of Power with a view to improving electricity supply and hence make Nigerians happy. Minister of State for Power, Godi Jedi Agba stated this at the opening of a four-day retreat for the management and staff of Nigeria Electricity Liability Management Company holding in Kano. Aminu Umar reports. The Nigeria Electricity Liability Management Company is an agency of the federal government scheduled with responsibility of managing liabilities of the defunct power holding company of Nigeria. The additional mandate given to the agency to manage the tariff shortfall of the Nigerian electricity industry is the reason for this retreat. Participants are fully armed with ideas that would contribute towards guiding the agency to achieve the new mandate. It's going to give us a platform to really add the tariff shortfall to the achievement of NEMCO. The retreat has presented all the platform for us to re-strategize going forward. Minister of State for Power, Godi Abba, who appraised the performance of NEMCO said synergy in the entire power industry will address all the challenges for more efficiency that will make electricity consumers happy. The happiness the managing director of the Nigeria Electricity Liability Management Company says depends on how best the agency is able to achieve its mandate, which will translate into more investment in the sector. Twice a month we meet and interact with the heads of the agencies and the directors and see that everybody is working together. But we see, we, we hope that in, in three, six months you will see a new vigorized, vigorized um, power sector. And the power sector needs a lot of investment because power business it's, uh, is costly. So what NEMCO is there is to take this weight the balance sheet of the distribution companies so that they'll be able to get finance. Chairman House Committee on Power, Magaji Dao Adu represented, acknowledged the transformation recorded by the agency which served Nigeria billions of Naira. In Kano, Amin Umar, NTA News. Let's head to Lagos now where Adeola will feed us with more news. Adeola, your turn. Thank you, Iere. 
by continually grooming its workforce and ramping up operational standard, the Federal Road Safety Corps is intentional about achieving its mandate of ensuring safe motoring on highways in the country. Despite the peculiar challenge that motoring in Lagos State presents, the sector commander of the Corps hopes to succeed in target delivery by motivating its officers. Adeniyi Taiwo has details. Apart from having the busiest highway in the country, the 127.6 kilometer Lagos Ibadan Expressway to manage on and off season, the Lagos State Sector Command of the Federal Safety Corps is daily saddled with unnoting several gridlocks that spring up in different parts of metropolitan Lagos. Through public enlightenment campaigns, stakeholders engagement, highway patrol, use of modern technology, and enforcement of regulations, among others, the Corps has in the last 34 years served to reduce the number of carnage on the highway. Fatalities on the road is dependent on the speed in which a vehicle was moving when an accident occurred. It's an offense for commercial vehicles that are carrying passengers not to install the speed limiting device. Apart from the pockets of challenges we have here and there, you can plan your journey these days because you know that FRSC operatives are on the road. They must have cleared the obstructions and we educate members of the public on daily basis, which is quite jamming. Route Commander Mala Jesutomipe is one of the 49 newly decorated officers of the sector command. Diligence at her job and that of others, she says, will further help the commission to achieve its mandate. So I would do much more talking to children, enlightening the people to make sure that the road is safe and of course nobody dies of road traffic accidents any longer. And we ensure safer motoring environment for all, all, all motorists. I will ensure that I put extra time to make sure that whichever assignment I'm being given, I would do my best. Regular evaluation and promotion is one of the ways that the Road Safety Corps uses to motivate its operatives to do more. In Lagos, Adeni Itaewo, NT News. Nigerian Brewers PLC, as a leading brand, clocked 75 years of refreshing lives and its existence in the Nigerian markets. The company recorded a 70% increase in, in profit after tax and recommended a total dividend of 12.9 billion naira, that is 1 naira 60 kabo per unit share for the 2021 financial year. This was made known at the 76th annual general meeting held in Lagos. Amaka O completes the report. The annual general meeting had the review of financial statement of the year 2021, which shows that Nigerian Breweries PLC, the pioneer and largest brewing company in Nigeria, came out strong in 2021 financial year, despite the economic setbacks posed by the COVID-19 and the new Omicron variant. This is evident as the company made a recovery in the profit after tax, which grew by 70% from 7.5 billion naira in the year 2020 to 13 billion naira in the year 2021. Leadership of the company say the secret of success stories over decades is based on placing its numerous consumers at the center which is the reason for an array of rich portfolio of high quality brands to meet their very needs. We continuously research into what we think the customers who need and put them in the market. And we have passion for quality. Uh, as a proud leader, a uh, huge legacy. We're here to stay um, in a sustainable way. We're adding capacity uh, to our footprint and, uh, you know, very much looking forward to uh, to continue to excite uh, consumers out there in the market. Shareholders through electronic voting approved the one naira 60 Kobo per unit share dividend recommended by the company, which in total is put at 12.9 billion naira. The growth over 20 percent in terms of uh, revenue but the bottom line which you consider which is profit after tax is over uh, it's about 71,000 I mean percent which is very very good Nigerian breweries PLC now has nine operational breweries with high quality products produced and distributed to all parts of Nigeria as well as numerous corporate social responsibility initiatives 
improving and touching the lives of Nigerians. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. And those are the stories from The Zone. The network news will continue after this time out, but don't forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on all our other social media platforms to stay with us. Important in life's little moments, strong teeth can help even if they get her into trouble sometimes. A great smile is useful to break the ice. And making friends is easier when you know you have fresh breath. I give my family confidence with Pepsodent's Triple Protection 123. It's three to place in one to give them cavity protection, white teeth, and fresh breath. The confidence of three to place in one. Pepsodent's Triple Protection 123. Introducing Good Night Power Shots Multi Insect Killer. Fast action and great fragrance. Spray two shots each in four corners of the room. Stops mosquitoes without stopping family moments. Good Night Power Shots. Spray inside, stay inside. Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Welcome to BBC Podcasts. Just being on the podium and, and hearing a national anthem play, that's what you compete for. What if you could copy the desert's most famous animal to design a more environmentally friendly building? Is Kim Jong-un trying to train a young generation of warriors in a new frontier, cyberspace? Explore new worlds together with podcasts from BBC News World Service. Helen Paul! Don't be surprised. I'm a new twin. I know you've heard of Apic Toilet Cleaner. Of course. And for the rest of your bathroom? Bathroom? I use detergent and bleach to clean. Madam, detergent and bleach does not give you better cleaning. In the bathroom, you find tough stains like grime, lime skin, and eating underneath are germs. Introducing new Apic Bathroom Cleaner. Dilute it in water to clean the floor. And for tough stains, use directly on surface to give you 10 times better cleaning versus detergent and kills germs as well. Wow. So blue for my toilet and red for my bathroom to be good as new. <laughs> to every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your official clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Glad to have you back. The FCT Police Command has commenced a special operation to clear out the territory's boundaries of remnants of bandits and kidnappers in the forests and to reinforce confidence across the affected areas. Correspondent Onoto Yakubu, who is tracking the ongoing exercise, brings a situation report from the operation base. It is an all-out offensive and crusade with the intent to take the war to the camps of the enemies. In their ranks are a significant number of hunters and members of Vigilante Group of Nigeria expected to bring their knowledge of the hilly and treacherous terrain to bear in executing the task. The operatives will travel several kilometers off course northeast of Yangoji and Chukuku on the motorable parts of the forest and then for more than five hours embark on foot patrol up the mountains. This means the security agency, we are gathering our momentum. This is, we are strategizing, we are focusing uh, in our determination to push bandits and banditry out of FCT. Deputy Commissioner of Police Bennett Igwe is commanding the operation. While addressing the team before takeoff, he assured that the command's management and the FCT administration expect so much from them to bring balance to the security architecture 
of the nation's capital. The Commission of Police of CTC people by the Sunday have given us a marching instruction and a marching order that all these camps, anywhere they are, God on our side, anywhere we see them, we clear them. Anywhere we see the camp, we finish the camp up. For CP Babaji Sunday's men, this war to secure the nation's capital is a must win. Onotu Yakobu, NTA News. And away from security, the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn, is advocating psychiatric tests for intending couples as part of marriage requirement in Nigeria. The advocacy is coming at the heel of the recent increase of gender-based violence witnessed in different parts of Nigeria. Ngozi Technicu completes the report. Various media platforms have been flooded with different cases of gender-based violence in the recent time. Prominent among these is the case involving late Osinachi Nwajuku, who is believed to have died as a result of domestic violence. As Nigerians were reacting to the ugly incident, a man in Plateau State, Samuel Matthew, was alleged to have murdered his 23-year-old wife, Mercy Samuel, and yet another young girl of Christland School said to be violently raped. This, the minister laments, as one more case too many of gender-based violence, which will no longer be tolerated. We have 5,010 reported cases as of today. Fatal cases, 160. Close cases, 231. It's so heartbreaking that sometimes it's members of the family that will go and tell the police to leave the matter. Because nobody has been hanged, nobody has been killed, nobody has been announced life imprisonment. In fact, life imprisonment is not even good enough. The minister, therefore, called on state governments, traditional and religious institutions to join in the fight to curb SGBV. In Abuja, Ngozi Thekniko, NTA News. In other news, the Federal Bureau of Safety Corps says it recorded a total of 131 crashes involving 857 people nationwide, with 84 deaths and 405 people rescued during the Easter celebration. In this special report, OEA Miyajai takes a look at why the country is still recording high rate of road accidents despite measures being put in place by the government. Every year, Month and by the minutes, efforts and measures are being put in place to achieve highway safety as well as ensure the reduction of high rate fatality in the country. However, with the just concluded Easter celebrations, the Federal Road Safety Corps, in its press release, reveals 131 road crashes with 84 deaths, out of which 857 people were involved. But the question many keep asking is why the increase in number of crashes despite measures put in place. People are no longer careful while they're driving. So I think it's due to carelessness and recklessness while driving. If they apply brake, maybe you're pulling them bubble to where you didn't know the roads. Before you match your own, you see automatically it's already accident. 213 vehicles were said to have been involved in the recent statistics. These include 15 articulated tankers, 28 trucks, 40 buses, 85 cars, 35 motorcycles, five tricycles and, and five pickups. The call says 47% increase of rescued victims recorded due to the establishment of more commands, outposts, roadside clinics and zebra points, which now feed in reports from different routes. The future Sala is close by and uh, the commercial has uh, called the core management to tell them about that uh, we should have what is known as early morning cry where we go and check people because apart from in the night to early morning we witness a lot of uh, crashes during this period. Analyzing the cause record for the 2022 Easter Special Patrol as against 2021, a total of 6,634 offenders were apprehended in 2022. 8,097 offenses were recorded. 3,187 impoundments were made in the same year. In Abuja, Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTNU. Let's take another quick break. Please stay. I bring you wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. 
Oja village. We know how to attack. And I know that even you too. You are getting a lot of orders. Hey, I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression? 15 year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I think I need to talk with that now. Welcome back. An international donors conference for Ukraine is to be held in Warsaw on 5th May. The event is being spearheaded by the Prime Minister of Poland, Mateusz Mortwerki, and the Prime Minister of Sweden, Magdalena Anderson, in partnership with the President of European Council, Charles Michael, and the President of the European Commission, Osla von der Leyen. This initiative aims to bring, provide humanitarian support for Ukraine. The meeting will be convened at the heads of state and government level with the participation of global business and financial institutions. Representatives, the conference will also initiate a series of aid events for war ravaged Ukraine in the upcoming months. The conference also aims to raise funds for Ukraine's growing humanitarian needs. According to the UN, 13 million people living in Ukrainian territory are in need of vital humanitarian aid, including shelter, food and medical supplies. Let's have a bit of sports now with Fayode Jimakinde as our guide. <laughs> The first phase of Division Two Volleyball League enters Day 2 Saturday in Jalingo, Taraba State, with six teams jostling for slots in Division One of the league. Earlier on Friday, Biomed Spikers beat Adamawa Spikers three sets to two in a championship which runs till April 30. Uniting the players here will show that there is no insecurity in Taraba State. The players were not scared. They were not scared to come here. Kamalu Bako shot a second round three under par 69 on day two after an opening round 76 to lead by a shot at the Captain's Cup tournament, which ends at the IBEB International Golf and Country Club Abuja on Saturday. Andrew Odo returned to the clubhouse with a level par 72 to sit second, a shot behind the lead, while overnight leader Kingsley Oparaku followed his opening round of 72 with an 83 as club captain Emmanuel Anosike bows out of office on Saturday. When we started, wanted to do something that has never been done before. So we are making sure that we play this tournament and everybody gets excited. In boxing, WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury will be making a second defense of the title he won against Deontay Wilder when he takes on Dillian White in an old British showdown on Saturday. The fight, slated for Wembley Stadium, will be watched by 94,000 fans as the Gypsy King seeks to protect his unbeaten record in his 33rd bout. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde, NTA News. All right, let's now take a quick look at the weather outlook for tomorrow. Oh, relatively calm. Saturday morning is expected over most part of the country as partly cloudy to cloudy atmosphere is expected over the northern region down to the coastal belt of the country with slim prospect over southern Adamawa, southern Taraba and the stretch of Cross River and rivers. There are better prospects of thunderstorms activities over the high grounds of the central states and the stretch of the coastal belts for the inland talking about Ondo, Enugu, Abia and Edo. The remaining part of the country will be partly cloudy to cloudy atmosphere. Thank you for watching and bye for now.
And that concludes NTA Network News tonight. Many thanks for watching. Here's, here's a quick reminder that rape is a crime. Speak up and take action. I'm Ian Ray John, and from the entire crew, have a good night. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>